Welcome back guys, Jay here. We're gonna get started by installing Unity as the first thing, right? So if you haven't already, uh, feel free to download Unity Hub. So Unity Hub is uh, basically Unity's way of centralizing your projects, your Unity versions, and some of the other things into one place. As you can see, I've got that open right now and download the latest version of Unity Hub, but don't worry about the Unity version that you're gonna download, which is something we're gonna look into right now. So first things first, download Unity Hub. Next, when you open it up, uh, you'll probably be prompted to sign in. So after you get through that stuff, you'll be presented with a screen like this. So in your case, you probably won't have any projects here, so it'll be blank, uh, but that's fine. And then first thing you gotta go uh, do is go into installs. This is basically where you can have multiple Unity versions at the same time. The, the good thing about Unity is that you can have as many versions installed on your computer uh, as you want. You can have uh, Unity 2021, 2020, 2019, or as many versions as you can because certain projects need different kinds of versions based on the functionality that you need. But for most cases, uh, it's always best to go with something like, um, you can go with the latest year. If it's 2023, go with 23. If you're watching this in 24, you can go with the 24 version if it's out already, um, or 25, 26, or if you're watching this from 2020, whatever it is, right? So just make sure that you're going for an LTS version. LTS stands for long-term support. The reason is once you pick a Unity version and create a project in it, you're kind of locked into it, right? So Unity's upgrade system, I don't really trust that. So when you really um, lock in a version saying, for example, 2021 3.15 F1 to my project, say you want to upgrade it. Upgrades usually work like 90% of the time. They're okay. But then sometimes they throw like a whole lot of bugs, a lot, lot, whole lot of errors that you got to fix. So usually when you start off with a version, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. So always go with the long-term support version, meaning these guys, Unity, will be continuing support for that version for a long period of time uh, as opposed to the normal versions, right? Never go with a beta version. Those are always unstable. Uh, don't go with any alpha beta releases. Always go with a stable version. But in my case, I always go with an LTS version. And I usually go for like 2020, 2021 versions because those are kind of stable as compared to the latest releases. So latest in Unity doesn't always mean good. It's it's not a good thing. In most software, the latest version is always the best. In Unity, they're sort of like a monthly, yearly releases. They keep putting out new versions, but that doesn't mean it's stable, right? Stable means it's been there for a while. They've really updated the um, setup really well, and Unity is more stable for that version for a long period of time. So always go for a version around 21 or 22, uh, 2022 LTS. Um, I'm gonna uh, start this project project with uh, 20, 2020 3.20 F1. This is a version that I trust a lot because I've had minimal issues with it. So I've got this installed already. So feel free to install your Unity by going over to this button over here and then pick um, any LTS version that's available here. Uh, go with a new version, ideally 2020, 2021, 22 LTS, any of that, right? That's up to you. Uh, whatever is showing up here, go with the LTS version, the latest one. And then once you get that installed, you should have it over here. So this usually takes maybe 30 minutes or less if you have a fast internet connection, but let it run its thing. And then once you're done, you'll be over here. That's all you got to do, right? Uh, beyond that, Windows will uh, be your default platform if you're running this on Windows and Unity is available on Mac as well. Now, one thing you got to keep in mind is that, mind is that um, in this course, I'll be using a Windows PC, but that doesn't mean that it's different in Mac. So if you're using a Mac to build your game, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Unity doesn't sort of you know change between these two platforms. Uh, only difference is if you're publishing to Windows, you got to have a Windows version ideally, and you got to have a Mac if you want to publish to Mac, right? So that's the only difference, but everything else is exactly one-to-one -one same. So don't worry about the platform difference that we have, you and I, right? So once you are done with installation, head over to project, and we're going to create our first project. So just click on new project over here, and then that's going to prompt you this screen. Make sure to select, if you have multiple Unity version installed, like me, just click the Unity version that you want. So if you have only one, you don't have to worry about that, all right? Um, over here, you've got some templates that you can get started with. Um, there are some categories for this. 
So since we're building a 3D game, go with this option. Uh, there's also two other variations of this. One is called HDRP, right? High definition render pipeline. So render pipelines in Unity is a way to um, create support for more advanced graphics. You can you can build more crazy graphics options. You can work with more graphics options, for example. And HDRP is great if you're publishing for consoles and you know really high quality PC games, right? So when I say high quality, I mean the graphics and 3D models and things like that, right? So this is great for AAA level games or double AA level games, but for indie games, I feel like it's an overkill. So I always avoid that for that reason, unless there's a particular reason that I want HDRP. Um, but I recommend you don't go with HDRP for this course simply because um, the, the workflow changes. With HDRP, there are certain models that you have to use that are supported by HDRP, which means that some of the 3D assets that you have, actually, most of the 3D assets on the asset store are not supported by HDRP, surprisingly, because it's new, relatively, and a lot of the um, legacy packages that are already there in asset store are not supported by HDRP. So just don't go with that for this course. Feel free to explore that in the future once you have a better understanding of Unity. Same for URP. URP stands for Universal Render Pipeline. Again, much lighter version of HDRP, but with still with a lot of graphic options. I still wouldn't go with that for this course. Just stick to the normal standard render pipeline for this. Uh, but feel free to explore these two in the future. That being said, uh, give your project a name. I'm going to call it The Lost um, Pendulum. That's the name that I could come up with. But if you guys want to name your game something else, feel free to do that as well. That being said, create a location, create the project. Once done, we will be in Unity and we'll be exploring some of the tools and we'll get to know the UI of Unity and everything else about it. All right, guys, I've got Unity open, so it may take a bit of time the first time you load Unity, but once done, you should see something like this. The structure of the um, panels, for example, may be different in yours, uh, depending on the Unity version you downloaded, but uh, don't worry, you can always change this to your liking. Um, I always have a certain format that I follow that I'll show you in a bit, but let's get to know the engine a bit and what we're working with here. So the first thing that'll catch your attention here is this 3D space. So how am I moving around like this? Simply by right-clicking my mouse in this area and then moving my mouse around. This right here is an endless infinite space. Um, so simply, we'll be building our big level, or our open, open world level over here. We'll be bringing all the 3D models and pretty much creating and crafting our environment in this endless space. Now, you can also move around in this space. If you hold on to that right mouse button again and use your WSD keys with the other, other hand, you can simply move around as you can see. So this is super important because as a game developer, you got to always look at your environment and 3D objects from different angles. That's super important because in, in 3D, things can easily deceive you. It may look like things are aligned, but if you look at it from a different angle, you can see that it's sort of tricking you. It's in somewhere else. So always look at it from different angles, move things around and move around your 3D environment simply by using the WASD keys together by holding on to your right mouse button. So always do that. So if you want to move faster in this 3D space, another way to do that would be to do all of that, plus hold on to your shift key. If you do that, just like in a real game, you can move a little bit faster in this 3D space. So if you have a big open world game, you can easily zoom into different places faster. If you want to change the camera speed, there's also this camera button over here. Uh, so there's a camera speed option that you can easily modify. I usually have 1.1. Because uh, that's a good speed to have, and it's pretty good for default, right? Other than that, let's look into all these different windows that are around us, right? This is a scene view that we just explored, but on the left, there's a hierarchy. Now, what's a hierarchy? Hierarchy basically is a list of all of the things that you are, that are in your scene, right? If you have a car, it's going to be listed there. If you have a building, it's going to be listed. There. If you have a forest there, every single thing in that forest will be listed there. So it's basically like a list of every single 3D, 2D object in your game. Now, there's a common word for this that we're going to consistently use all throughout this course and in your Unity career or, you know, adventure <laughs> journey, right? So that's a common word for it. Any object in your game is called a game object. 
right? So that's Unity's way of naming every single thing in your game as a common thing. Game object can be referred to um, anything in your game, such as a tree, a person, a character, the ground, the sun, directional light, main camera, anything. All of them are game objects. So hierarchy will list every game object in your scene. Currently, I actually have two things by default. One is the main camera. So main camera, just like a real world camera, is basically placed to record the action in front of it, right? So right now, if I move into a different perspective, right click, WASD keys, shift to move faster. Let's look at what the camera is seeing. Nothing. It's basically looking into the horizon. That's exactly what this preview right here is showing. So if you click on the game tab, which is right next to your scene tab, it's going to show you exactly what your players will see once you publish this game. Right now, it's just looking at the horizon. That's exactly what the main camera is projecting. So whatever that's in front of your main camera in your game will be shown to your player. So ideally, in our game, this is going to be like a moving character with a, with a camera. So we can have like a camera follow the main character because it's a third-person game. And it's going to see the player and everything around it. Right? So that's the main camera. The second game object that you uh, have by default is a directional light. Directional light is basically a simulation of your actual sun. And I'm not kidding about this. So just like your actual sun, the direction projects shadows, um, the movement and uh, movement of the sun and everything can be sort of um, simulated in Unity but simply by using a directional light and the rotation of that, right? So we just have one by default. We're going to sort of... Um, play around with this in our lighting chapter. But for now, let's just get to know the environment that we're working with, the engine. Other than that, at the bottom, you got a project window. So the project window is sort of your window to your entire directory of your game. So this is all the files that you have, any assets, audio, video, um, 3D models. Um, you can have your scripts and all kinds of stuff in here. Um, on the right-hand side, you got an inspector. So inspector shows all the properties of your currently selected game object. We don't have anything selected, that's why it's great. So let's select the main camera. When you do that, all the properties of the main camera are shown on the right hand side in the inspector, right? So all of the properties are specific to the game object you selected, meaning if you now select directional light, the properties are now different. They are always specific to what you selected, right? So this is super important because this has all the settings that we need for certain game objects to work, right? Other than that, we also have um, the scene and the game tab at the top, yep. And then over here, the this, this toolbar has a play button, post button to actually play the game. And then we've got a bunch of tools over here. Let's explore these um, in a bit. But first, let's create a folder structure. Now, a folder structure is super important for your game because when the game becomes bigger and you import a lot of assets into your game, it's going to get very mess messy really fast, right? So the easiest way to sort of manage that mess is to organize them from the get-go. So let's start doing that right now. So over here in the project window, there's a folder structure that I always follow. And it's not like a hard and fast rule to do this, but it's a standard that I follow personally for my game. So you can do the same thing. If you right click this empty area in your project tab, go to create menu, click on folder. Let's create a folder called scripts. All right, oops, I have my caps on, scripts. Create another folder, right click, create folder called models. I'm going to put all my 3D models in here. Let's create another one called sounds. We're going to put all our sound effects in here. Let's create another one for textures. And you can have a couple more as well for now. I think we're okay. Um, we're going to have all these folders over here, right? So when we import certain assets of a certain type, like sounds and um, you know, 3D models and things like that, we're always going to put them in the correct folder to just manage the mess, right? That's the first thing that we did. Now, let's add a couple of things into our scene and get to know how some of these tools work. This is the exciting part. So over here in the hierarchy, right click anywhere in this empty space, click on 3D object, click on plane. When you do that, a new plane will be created in the middle of your scene. So how do you get around and look at it from different angles? You already know it. Hold on to your right mouse button and WASD keys to look at it from different angles like this. It's always good to do that because you can look at it from different angles, like I said. 
And let's add another thing in here, make it a little bit more inter interesting. Right click again in the hierarchy, 3D object, cube. Now, it created a cube, but where is it though? I can't really see it, I can see an outline. That's because it got created over here. Now it's based on your perspective of the camera, the camera that you currently are using in the 3D editor. So how do you pull it up over here to the plane? Quite by simply by using the move tool over here. In the top left, you have a bunch of tools over here, right? So the move tool is the one with these arrows pointing in four directions. If you click on that one, you have these three directions that are pointed out on your, on your selected game object. So you have the Y axis, which means vertical, and you have the Z, which is depth, and you have X, which is horizontal. So if you click on any of these, as you guess, may have guessed, you can actually pull this game object in different directions, in the selected direction. Right? So since I want it above the plane, I'll put it over here. I'll click on the Y axis, pull it over here. And now it's above the plane. Now I'm gonna move closer and I'm gonna just place it on the plane roughly, just place it over there, right? There we go. And what's another tool? We can use, um, we can use the rotate tool. So if you click on that one, as you can see the gizmos now changed um, to these axes. So any of these icons that you see are called gizmos. That's sort of the nickname. So those are just indications of what a certain tool is or what a certain game object is or where it is, right? So you've got two gizmos here for the main camera and the direction light, which I don't know if you can see, it's a sun, right? But moving back, um, we've got uh, three axes now indicating as a sphere, uh, meaning that we can actually rotate this in three axes, X, Y, Z as well. So as you may have guessed it, I can use this to rotate in those directions. I can do that. Now let's use the move tool to sort of bring it up a bit. There we go. Let's explore another tool, the scale tool. With the scale tool, uh, we can basically make, make things bigger or smaller, enlarge or minify, right? So we're gonna make this cube a little bit bigger. Now, if you accidentally unselect your 3D object any any given time, um, you can simply click on that 3D object again and the tool will highlight again. And as you can see, we've got different kinds of gizmos for that, again, in three directions. As you may have guessed, you can pull from that given direction like that. And you can make it a bit bigger. There you go. All right. Now, the next tool that we're gonna explore is a rec tool, all right? The rec tool is very similar to the scale tool. It can enlarge or minify, but in a certain direction only. For example, with the rec tool, say I wanna expand this side only, I can simply do that. But let me show you the difference. If you go back to the scale tool, and if you try to do that in the horizontal, it tries to expand or minify in both sides, which is not ideal for certain situations. So for those situations, we can just go to rec tool and just pull from the direction that you want. Right, and the rest of the tools are things that we'll explore in the next uh, next video and videos to come, uh, simply because we don't need some of these fe uh, features that are provided in Unity. Um, we only use the ones that are very common for most cases, but there are advanced use cases which you which we will explore together in towards, towards like the um, end of this course and some of the other optimization chapters. But for now, you're good to go with these basics. And I'll see you guys in the next video. We'll be uh, importing a prototype asset pack from the asset store and set it up. See you then.